own fast. The number of cases of Clostidium difficile in this country has soared from fewer than 1,000 in 1990 to more than 43,000 in 2004. The latest figures show there were 934 deaths in 2003. Now, to put that in context, it's only a few short of the number of people killed by MRSA in the same year. Well, Emma Murphy is at Stoke Mandeville Hospital in Buckinghamshire, uh, where the infection has spread. Emma, what are the hospitals saying about this? Well, I've been speaking to senior managers here at Stoke Mandeville Hospital this morning, and they tell me that they now have 17 cases of this bug within the 500 patients that they're treating here at the moment and they're eager to point out that of those figures that we've heard of the deaths and the number of infections over the last 18 months they are not simply in the spinal unit they are across the hospital as a whole but they say now they believe they are getting the situation under control when this situ when this bug became notifiable they noticed that there was a massive increase in the number of people having it in their hospital they're now doing barrier nursing and isolation and they're also treating the entire area of the hospital with special antiseptics in order to stop the spores actually landing on surfaces and continuing to contaminate. However, what they are saying is that there is absolutely no question of healthy people catching this kind of bug. It is uh, really going to single out those who are already weak and vulnerable and often amongst that group it is obviously the elderly. OK, Emma, thank you for now. Professor Brian Durden's Inspector of Microbiology at the Department of Health, and he joins us now from our Westminster studio. Uh, Professor Durden, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Emma, they're saying the elderly particularly could be vulnerable uh, from this uh, strain. How concerned generally should patients be? Well, generally, this is a, a bacterium that affects people who've had antibiotics that have disturbed their normal bacteria in the gut and then this organism can take a hold and cause its diarrheal disease. It's particularly um, a, a concern in elderly people and of course they're very likely to have antibiotics for things like bad chest infections. But uh, Professor Durden, it's, the worrying thing I guess is that it seems to be resistant to so many cleansing agents which are used regularly in hospitals. Uh, what is the course of action to try and beat this? Well that's the point about clostridial infections generally, they, they form spores, it's not just the what we call the vegetative living bacteria and these spores can survive and are resistant to, uh, to some antiseptics and uh, disinfectants but they can be killed by good cleaning and Good, anti, uh, good disinfectant use, but it, it requires more than is normally done for a routine clean. Professor Durden, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now it's time to take a break, but there is more still to come here on the Lunchtime News, including... Not just men only, why women should get clued up about heart disease. I was just heading to bed when I felt this pain in my back and the pain just wouldn't go, and then after a few moments, it kind of spread it to my chest. Even at risk until it's too late. So, for today's Life Matters, the British Heart Foundation is trying to raise our awareness. Yes, it's determined to dispel the myth that heart disease only affects men. In fact, despite women's fears, breast cancer is nowhere near as big a killer as an unhealthy heart. Keir Simmons is at the campaign launch right now. Keir. Well, Alistair, today in Edinburgh, Cardiff, Birmingham, uh, Manchester and London. The British Heart Foundation has set up these gravestones to represent the 2,400 women who die of heart disease every week. Someone's grandmother, someone's mum, someone's sister. If you thought that heart disease only happens to slovenly older men, this campaign today will change your mind. Are you one of those women who think that heart disease won't happen to you? That you're too young or that only men have heart attacks? One in three women are killed by heart disease. That's 2,400 per week. Mother of two, Julie Lee Cock, had a heart attack at 34 years old, despite there being no history in her family. It was at night. I was just heading to bed when I felt this pain in my back and the pain just wouldn't go. And then after a few moments, it kind of spread it to my chest. And after I couldn't breathe and I started to throw up, I just knew I had to ring um, the 999. As she lay in hospital and in shock, she saw other people, also in their 30s, also hit by heart disease. I was completely shocked. I was so shocked by it that when they started to pump me with medication, 
um, you know, to prevent another heart attack. I just couldn't believe it. And I was in there for five days and within the second or the third day, it was only then that I decided, you know, that this was actually happening to me. Most women think breast cancer is more of a risk to their health than a heart attack, but this is wrong. Perhaps today you could take a moment and consider whether you're putting too much pressure on your heart. Joining me now is uh, former health minister uh, Edwina Curry, um, but you're also involved in this, Edwina, because your family have suffered from heart disease. Well, we have. Uh, my father died quite early age, uh, 65, and I have a cousin who recently had to have a quaternary heart bypass at the age of only 50. We have to 50 watch it. Years in, 50 years old. Yeah. So we have to watch it in our family, and I'm very conscious of that. And uh, what are you doing to, to, to try and stop it for yourself? And also, what, what's the British Heart Foundation doing? Well, I've, I've been looking after myself as well as I could for about 20 years. When we finish talking today, I'm going to go down to the gym, for example. I cycle. I mean, I'm not fanatic about it. I try and keep fit, try and keep the weight off, eat sensibly, don't smoke, easy with the alcohol. I mean, I enjoy a glass of wine, but... That, but you know, not too much, and try not to worry about things. Stress is also an important factor. BHF is our biggest charity for heart disease, and a lot of the money goes into research. So, for example, if, if somebody here in Soho healed over today and had a heart attack, what happens in the next hour or so is based on very good research. They're far more late, likely these days now to recover. OK, Edwina Curry, thank you uh, very much. Well, 1.2 million uh, women in the UK right now are living with heart disease. It's a really serious problem. Thanks, Keir. Another week, another row is brewing over the British referendum on the European Constitution.